Hi there, welcome back. Um, what am I going to do today? Today, well I have a few things I need to do. It's kind of an odds and sods day. I need to button up a few loose ends. I need to uh, secure the uh, air intake. I need to secure my exhaust, put the muffler on. Um, I need to hook up my fuel line. Well I've got a way that I'm going to install the actual fuel pump itself. Uh, in an effort to keep it quiet because they make a tick 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 noise and I'd like to try and mute that as much as possible and so I got to work on something for that um, I have to hook up the uh, the ducting itself on the inside um, so I've got a few things to do today I'll try and knock off as much as possible and I guess this is as good a time as any to say that if you are enjoying this content at all feel free to like and subscribe I would appreciate that very much and uh, yeah the more people on the channel, uh, the more input, more feedback I get back, and uh, then we can all learn something. All right, enjoy the episode. So you may recall that I wish to run my ducting uh, from the heater down here uh, out he through here and it's going to vent through uh, a door that I'm custom making with a vent grill in it. I still want to isolate this section. What I need is I still need a, a way to mount the vent ducting. So this is roughly rectangular shape. I need to make a small piece that fits in there that I will then uh, connect my, uh, my vent to and the duct will be able to connect to it. So because it is currently not raining and it's probably gonna start raining within the hour, I'm gonna start on this because that will, uh, um, because I have to do the cutting outside and uh, hey, I don't wanna get rained on. So this is my piece that I've cut to fit in that rectangular shaped opening. You can see I've drawn a uh, three inch hole on here, which is where this vent needs to connect to. So I'm gonna get started on that. I'm gonna flip that over and cut the rest of it from the other side, which will reduce the tear out I get because I'm using a, it starts with a pilot hole, I know that I will be perfectly lined up with what I've already started on the other side. I'm just gonna run into the trailer and test fit this before I uh, secure this to here. Okay, as things would have it, I actually need, need to shave down maybe an eighth of an inch starting at this corner and tapering up to here into nothingness. Nothing on this. Um, so I'm going to take this over to the belt sander and do just that. Before I do that though, I am going to um, keep my finger right there so I don't lose that spot. So I'm going to make a pencil line right there so I know exactly um, what it is. Yeah, I don't want to lose the orientation when I go inside to the uh, to the belt center. Pausing you right now. Okay, perfect fit. Um, got a slight taper on the edge of here that'll follow the profile of the uh, of the inner wall of the camper. And yeah, this fits nicely. Now the vent length that I need is quite short, which is nice because that'll allow me to use remainder if necessary on the uh, on the intake side okay you can see where I've uh, fit this piece in here um, I will toss a couple of brad nails in there uh, before I walk away from this and now I'm just going to put my uh, little piece of vent ducting in there and I apologize ahead of time for the number of times that my arms are going to get in the way of the shot. Um, but we have to install this correctly. 
it's more about a good installation than it is about getting that perfect shot. Or is it? If you want to get a look at this from the other side. Oh yeah. So you can see it's just a short piece of ducting, but what it'll allow me to do is to put uh, some rock saw insulation around the unit itself. This doesn't get terribly hot. It gets warm, but not super hot. And the insulation can handle temperatures up to 2000 degrees. So we are not concerned about that at all. Anything that I can do to deaden the sound uh, is, uh, is welcome. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, start connecting things up underneath uh, uh, the air intake, the exhaust, um, start thinking about how I want to run the fuel line, and uh, yeah, if we weren't calling for rain today, I'd roll the camper out onto the grass where it would be more comfortable to lay on um, but it could rain so I'm gonna be laying on concrete trying to get a decent camera angle underneath here is always challenging but I think I'll start with the air intake now what they recommend for this is to uh, uh, direct it towards the front I do not want the exhaust to be uh, exhausting uh, by the air intake. I'd rather have these as far apart from each other as possible. I would like the exhaust to be sending the exhaust fumes out the back. So yeah, I'm gonna take this air intake out to the front over here. Now what they also give you is this little um, piece that fits on the end here. It's nothing fancy. All it is is just a little foam piece of foam insert in this little holder you know keep the bugs out so your heater isn't sucking in insects <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can use this clamp in such a way so as to um, Have it help hold the the intake pipe onto this little filter doohickey. Doohickey. And secure it at the same time. This cap just clips off and on very easily. So I may, without blocking these little air intake holes here, I may take some Gorilla Tape or something and just cut some strips to hold this in position. Or maybe I could zip tie this around the end like this because I guarantee you a couple of bumps and this thing is going to fall off. Now, here's our muffler, and you might recall from our first episode that I said it uh, actually has proven to be the quieter muffler, um, even though it is a straight through design. Uh, it looks to be some glass packing in there. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, this little drain hole down at the bottom here, it's important to keep that at the bottom because any condensation that could potentially build up in here you uh, you want to allow it to be able to uh, to drain away you do not want the condensation to sit in the pipe not having any low spots in it I want to clamp this up I want to dead clamp it so that it doesn't have any low spots can you see where I'm going with that there 
I might go make my own clamp here. I don't uh, particularly like this. Yeah, because this this little clamp that they've given me is kind of goofy. Actually, if I flatten it out, it will do what I need it to do. Okay, uh, be right back. Okay, so what I've done is I took that little round clamp and I flattened it out and drilled another hole in it. So now, what I can do, and I've also got a little stainless steel fastener here, uh, and I'm going to take this and with a little bit of uh, Loctite on the threads, I'm going to uh, attach this to the muffler. Now the reason I'm putting the Loctite on here is simply because I don't want this to come loose and uh, so wouldn't you know these little holes are slightly offset and even though it fits through here it's not going to fit through there it's always two steps forward one step back when you're doing this kind of a thing so excuse me while I get up off the concrete and go get a drill to slightly enlarge this hole There we go. That should work well. What I've been fiddling around with for the last half hour is uh, taking measurements and uh, cutting a piece of board, a uh, piece of plywood, uh, just to enclose the heater into its own compartment and it's a lot of fiddling around because none of the angles are square right the back of the trailer wall is curved um, and so yeah it's lots of uh, lots of little measurements and cutting and, and whatnot um, as for wood I'm using three quarter inch plywood I could have gone with uh, lighter I suppose but uh, you know the best uh, best plywood sometimes to use especially with the cost of wood these days um, the stuff you already have on hand, uh, that's going to be your best price. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, there isn't really any way to practically film this um, while I'm doing it. So I'll just uh, show you where I'm at now and then I'll show you the finished product afterwards. A lot of these um, heater installation videos, it looks like it took the guy about 15 minutes to put it in and that's never the case uh, it's it takes a while um, uh, yeah it's if it looks like it's taking a long time to do this it's not because I'm working slow well maybe I work slow but but it's because it takes a long time to do this it's not uh, as quick and easy as a lot of the installation videos make it look um, unless of course you have uh, completely unobstructed access to where you want to install it that is not the case here so it takes a while okay I've notched the corners where needed let's see if it fits we are well on our way I need to make a piece now that will just kind of close this top part off um, it will serve two purposes one it will run across and give me an edge to uh, screw this into I am going to put some screws in here to secure that and then this face plate here the front piece will uh, screw in from the side but I want to make sure I'm square before I actually screw that in place um, I have to run my wiring through the floor 
the wiring that needs to go through the floor, even though I've already, uh, that wiring that has gone through for the fuel pump is already through, what also needs to go through is my power and my ground. The thermostat is gonna go up through the top. I don't wanna attach it to the wall. I just don't like that idea. So I think what I'll do is just, I'll run the wires in behind here and just have it so it sits up here in the cubby. Um, that's far enough away from where the warm air exhausts. You don't want the thermostat sitting very close to where the air exhausts because then it's not taking a reading of the temperature of the interior of the, the camper per se. It's reading the, the warm exhaust as it's coming straight out of the vent. And so you want to have them some space between the two of them. Uh, because this one's coming out down over here and the bed will be over top of here. And so the warm air will be coming out from under the bed uh, towards the front of the camper. The thermostat just sitting up in the little cubby here at the back of the camper. Um, will work well, I think. So, well, you know that larger gauge wire that I was talking about? I don't have any on hand. So, I think I'm going to call this episode here. And as I mentioned earlier, if you think you are getting anything useful out of this content, uh, please feel free to subscribe. Thanks very much. See you next time.